In Bethany, there lived two sisters, Mary and Martha, with their brother, Lazarus. They all adored Jesus, and Jesus was very fond of them also. One day, while Jesus was visiting them, Martha was busy cleaning the house and preparing food. She wanted to be sure that Jesus was well taken care of. Instead of helping her sister, Mary sat at Jesus' feet, listening to him speak. The harder Martha worked, the more upset she was looking at her sister. There were many others who were also sitting with Mary while Martha was preparing a meal. Finally, Martha complained. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Please tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part. When he said this, Jesus was ignoring the traditional role of women and encouraging Mary to think and learn. He did not say that Martha's role of service was unimportant. What he did say was that being a disciple and learning about the ideas he was explaining was even more important. One day, Lazarus, their brother, fell ill. Mary and Martha were worried. Their brother was sick, very sick. The sisters knew Lazarus might die soon, so they immediately sent a message to Jesus. Jesus was preaching in Jerusalem when he got the message. Master, there is a message from Bethany. Mary and Martha want to meet you urgently. Mary and Martha? Yes, Master. Do you know them? Of course I know them. How can I forget sweet Mary, who washed my feet with perfume and then wiped them with her hair? I wonder, what could be the matter that she wishes to see me so urgently? The message says that your dear friend Lazarus is very ill and might die. Hmm. Lazarus is ill, is he? But he will not die because of the illness. In fact, this illness will demonstrate to the people the glory of God. Jesus did not go to see his friends for the next two days, and after two days told his disciples, Come, it is now time to go to Bethany. My friend Lazarus is sleeping, and I have to go and wake him up. Are you sure you want to go back there, Master? Have you forgotten that not too long ago the Jews there were ready to stone you to death? If Lazarus is sleeping, he will soon wake up. Why do you have to go there? Don't worry. People realize their mistakes at some time or the other. And you have not understood what I meant. When I said Lazarus is sleeping, I meant that he is dead. If he is already dead, then why do you want to risk your life and go there, my lord? I have told you, this is an opportunity for everyone to see the glory of God when I go to Bethany to wake up Lazarus. The disciples were all confused. They just couldn't understand what Jesus was trying to say. However, they did not question him any further and accompanied him to Bethany which was very close to Jerusalem. On hearing of Lazarus' death, several Jews from Jerusalem had come to Bethany to be with Martha and Mary to comfort them. When news of the arrival of Jesus became known, Martha rushed there to meet him, leaving Mary at home. Ah, my dear Martha, I am happy to see you after so long. Oh, Jesus! We sent word to you to come here quickly. If you had come sooner, Lazarus would not have died. But I still have faith and hope in you. I know that if you ask, God will grant your wish. 
Calm down, Martha. Please, calm down. Have faith in me and God. Your brother shall soon be alive and with you. Oh, I know that. He will come alive when everyone else will, which will be on the last day. No, Martha. Your brother will become alive now. What do you mean, Master? He has been dead and in the tomb for four days now. Jesus looked at Martha calmly and placed his hand on her shoulder. Look at me, Martha, and tell me, do you not have faith in me and in God? Martha held Jesus' hand, looked up at him, and said, My Lord, how can you even doubt my faith in you? I trust you with my whole being. Well then, let's go and see Mary. Where is she? I'm sure she will be waiting anxiously. She is at home, my Lord. Come, let's go there. I want to meet Mary also. So Jesus accompanied by Martha and his disciples, went to Martha and Mary's home. As soon as Mary saw him, she rushed up to him and repeated what Martha had said. Oh, Lord Jesus, why did you not come as soon as we sent word to you? If you had, our brother would be alive today. Jesus embraced her and told her what he had told Martha. Trust me and God and Lazarus shall soon be alive and with you. Mary was as surprised as Martha had been when she heard this. Their brother had been dead and buried for four days. How could he become alive? But she did not say anything, as her faith in Jesus was also very strong. Come, lead me to where my friend Lazarus sleeps. Everyone was very curious. They all knew Lazarus had died, so how could he become alive again? So along with Jesus and his disciples, Mary and Martha, a lot of other people marched towards the cave where Lazarus had been buried. On reaching there, Jesus saw that the mouth of the cave had been covered with a big stone. This boulder has to be moved so that Lazarus can walk out. The people were all amazed. No one had ever witnessed a dead person become alive again. They looked at each other, wondering what was going to happen. My Lord, it has been four whole days since our dear brother was buried. His body will be smelling very badly by now. Mary, you say you have total faith and trust in me. Then why do you keep doubting me? Er, no, no, my lord, please don't mistake me. I do trust you. Well, then, get someone to move that big stone from the entrance of the cave. A few people came forward and pushed the heavy stone away from the entrance to the cave. Some of the people immediately covered their noses with cloth, expecting a dirty smell from the decaying body. However, Jesus' disciples and those who believed in him slowly moved forward. Jesus went up to the cave and called out, Lazarus, come out, my dear friend. Look, your sisters have come to receive you. Everyone stood in shock. My friend. Lord Jesus, you are truly the Messiah, the Son of God. The people who witnessed Lazarus come to life fell at the feet of Jesus also. 
There was no doubt now in anyone's mind that Jesus was indeed their Savior. Noah had many, many descendants. As time went by, they all formed groups and settled in several different places. One such group, which had wandered far and wide, finally reached a place with fertile plains called Shinar in Babylonia. They all liked this place as soon as they arrived there. This is a beautiful place. I think we should all settle down here. What do you all say? Yes, yes it is indeed a lovely place. We can make this into a beautiful town, which will be the envy of everyone. So they all got together and set to work to create their dream city. They were very skilled workers, and they did make a city that was indeed worthy of pride. News of their beautiful city soon spread far and wide, and many people came to visit and admire it. One day, the head of the town called all the residents for a meeting. My dear friends, when we came here, we had decided to make a city that everyone would talk about and admire. Well, like you know, we have been able to achieve that. Not many have been able to match our expertise. However, I think that soon some people will be able to do what we have done, and maybe do it even better. We cannot allow that to happen. No, no, not at all. Well, I have been thinking about it a lot lately. We have to do something remarkable, which no one else can copy. Do you agree with me? Yes, 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 yes. 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 I am glad to hear that. Well, I did think of something which I doubt anybody else can copy. I will need the cooperation of all my friends here to achieve that. Are you willing? Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Tell, Tell us what, what we're to, to do. do! We, we are, are all with you. you! I know that we have some extremely skilled people amongst us who will be able to do what I have in mind. Tell, Tell us! What, Tell us! What. I was thinking that we should build a tower. A tower? What is so special about a tower? I'm sure there are towers in many other cities. No, no, you don't understand. I was not thinking of an ordinary tower. Sir, please tell us clearly what you are thinking. I really cannot understand how we can make a tower that no one else can copy. My dear friend, we shall construct a tower that is very, very tall. So tall that it will touch the sky. A tower that will touch the sky? Really? You think we can do that? Of course we can. I have full faith and trust in the capabilities of my citizens. Well then, what are we waiting for? Let's start the planning right now. The people of the town became very excited. They were extremely proud of their town and were willing to do anything to make sure no other town could surpass them. They were ready to take on the challenge of executing such a difficult task. And soon the work on the tower started. Everyone did what they could. A 
and very soon the tower had reached a great height. Look at that! What a marvelous structure! I don't think anyone can make something better than this. Yes, our beautiful town. How everyone will envy us. In the meanwhile, God was watching what was going on, and he was greatly distressed. That is indeed a wonderful town and tower, isn't it? Why do you seem so upset, God? You are only seeing the wonder of the town and tower, but you don't see how the people of the town have changed. They have become proud and vain. They have forgotten me and think that they do not need me anymore. They don't realize what is happening and I have to stop this before it is too late. Yes. Yes, God, I see now how the people of this town are so proud of their achievements. I am going to put a stop to this. But how will you do that, God? Why have the people been able to create all this? Because there is an understanding and cooperation between them. But if that understanding and cooperation go away, they will not be able to do anything. I don't understand, God. What do you plan to do? Come and see what I am going to do. Suddenly, the people of the town became very confused. They couldn't understand what was happening. Everyone was uttering words which no one else could understand. What a sight it was! There was chaos everywhere. Everyone thought that the other person was babbling. There was utter frustration and confusion. How could anyone live together if they could not understand each other? As a result, it was not possible for them to work together also, so the construction of the famous tower was stopped. Soon, the town was no longer the beautiful place that the people had been so proud of. Also, since it was not possible for the people to live together harmoniously, they soon started drifting away to other places. It is said that this was how the different languages of the world evolved. God, now that tower will never get completed. It is good that it will never get completed. If the tower had been completed, the people would have become even more vain and proud. They would have forgotten me and gone against me, and that would have led to their self-destruction. This incomplete tower should be called the Tower of Babel, or Confusion, and should be a lesson for all men.